my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my savior on that cursed tree his body and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the ancient seal by heavy stone Messiah still and all
VIC Cypress Church, where we raise pace setters and role models who reign in absolute dominion and prosperity in life. We're so excited that you've joined us today. If it's your very first time here, don't forget to connect with us by calling, visiting us on our website at www.dicypress.org, or following us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at DIC Cypress. Now, let us pray. Father God, I just want to thank you for who you are. I ask you to please to open our hearts as we hear your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, let's worship. I want you to sing that song, Amazing God, Amazing God. You do mind-blowing things, Amazing God. I command you pain. Go in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. I command you, you pain. Go in the name of Jesus. We cast you out right now. In the name of Jesus. He is our Jehovah Rapha. Mako said the end of Roshka. Nika Zaza Tayanda Roshka. Niata Tusa Taya. Lepa Roshka. I command restoration. 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 In the name of Jesus. You do my blowing this. You are doing it again the lives of your people this morning. You are doing it again the lives of your people this morning. He kata uza la yanda roska. Le kete tele yanda kosa. The Lord is reversing in the name of Jesus. Every denier is reversing, is reversing, is reversing in the name of Jesus. Makuze le yanda roska. Li haba roza la yalaka. Pakata ta yala uza. Marata kose le yanda roska. In the name of Jesus. That dark area, the light of God is shining. The light of God is shining this morning. That dark area, the light of God is shining. In the name of Jesus. Every darkness is despair this morning. In the name of Jesus. Every darkness is despair this morning. Le abarosh kete ela handa kosa. Le ekete tele ela kosha bayanda roska. In the name of Jesus. Makatusa bayanda kosa bayanda roska. Your tears are wiped away. Your tears are wiped away. The Lord is wiping away tears this morning. The Lord is wiping away tears this morning. Cry no more. 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 The Lord is wiping away tears this morning. The Lord is wiping away tears this morning. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is wiping away tears this morning. In the name of 
Jesus. Makata yanda posa. Ili keshe kelewe. Yanda posa kayanda rosa. Maka oza kayanda rosa. Mala yala posa kayanda posa. Neke barose kayanda roska. Father, we exalt your name. I'm your servant, Lord. That which you have put in me is what I've declared over your people this morning. You said to me you want to manifest yourself as the great I am this morning. Father, we have yielded ourselves to you this morning. Thank you for the tears you have wiped away. Thank you, Father, for that burden in that heart that is lifted this morning. Thank you for the healing you have done this morning. Thank you, Father, for that deadline that you are meeting right now. That deadline, you are meeting it right now. Thank you, Lord, because you will not allow your home to suffer corruption. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, because shame is being exchanged this morning for fame in the name of Jesus. Shame is being exchanged for fame this morning in the name of Jesus. Thank you for restoring glory into that life. Yes, the enemy has stolen it, but the Lord is restoring it. 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 It's a new day in the name of Jesus. In every place where you have been put to shame, they will celebrate you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. It's such a joy that you will honor us with your presence this morning. We acknowledge your presence and we bow in worship this morning. We join the chorus of heaven this morning to declare, Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Even this sanctuary this morning is full of your glory. Our lives is full of your glory this morning. No one shall go back home the same. The entrance of your world grant us light this morning. As we look into your world this morning, light comes to us. And no one shall go back home the same. We give you all the glory, Father. And when all is said and done, the glory will be returned to you. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please say after me this morning, I am blessed and exceedingly rich in all things. I'm rich in good works and always ready to give good measure press down shaking together and running over riches flow to me from men women and institutions wealth and riches remain in my household for all generations and god's heavenly treasures for all eternity fruitfulness is my portion forever if you believe that say resounding amen. amen hallelujah please be seated this morning thank you so much for making it to church the lord bless you the bible said they go from strength to strength everyone at the appear in zion as you have come this morning a measure of strength is added to you and it's not just physical strength neither is the only spiritual strength every grace that you need to excel in life is added to you this morning in jesus name I just want to encourage our hearts uh, to follow after uh, Minister Charles this morning. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 8 verse 12 concerning Jesus Christ, he said, I am the light of the world. But while he was going, he made it clear to us that we are now the light of the world. And we are the city set upon the hill that must not be hidden. I want to request of us this morning, please shine your light. The world will be as dark as we want it to be. Because if the light will remain hidden, then the darkness will continue to have a few days. But the day we choose to shine our light, then we'll begin to make the world brighter. So I want to encourage your heart, please share the light. The Bible says that comfort others with the same comfort you have been comforted. If Minister Charles will say to us this morning, somebody called him from Cameroon, go to church. Call somebody to come to church too. That's what we are saying. That is what it means for you to shine the light. And I want you to see beyond as much as we want the church to be filled. Yes, it's our desire, it's our prayer. But it's more than that. It's a joy you are giving to a family. Because that child you are calling to church that is contacting Christ, it has been a headache and a heartache 
for the family. Are you just showing the light by inviting the person to church? Sincerely, we bring joy to that family. Not only that, we have a society that is sin. Somebody was killed. I went to pray for somebody in Richmond some times ago, like uh, 2021 to be precise. And the woman was sharing the ordeal of how the husband was killed. The husband had been working in a particular place for 20 years. And this faithful morning, they were meant to go to church together to uh, drop off the daughter in college station. But the, husband, the wife said, no, I'm, I can drive. You go to work since you have a meeting. And that was the reason why the man didn't go to college station. And the man was going to work less than a mile to his office that he had been working for 20 years. A drunk driver ran into him and killed him. And he died on the spot. They called the wife from college station to say, come and identify this person because we trace from the phone that you are the wife. And I imagine if somebody administered salvation to the person that was drunk a night before, you would have salvaged a sorrow in the family. So it's beyond just the child being full. It's making the society safe for all because the more the light we have, the brighter our world will become. So I want to challenge your heart this morning. Please make it intentional, not just where you see. As you are having a prayer list and you are trusting God for expansion of your business, can you also trust God for expansion for his house? Because the more we have the heart of God filled, the more the world becomes bright. So I want to request of you, pray about it. I've not been doing it, but I have been deliberately doing that now. That God, where are the souls that you want me bring in? Be deliberate about that. And I trust God that God will give to you the soul that is ripe for harvest. You not have to struggle and struggle and struggle. It will just be a test. And the person will say, okay, I'll be there. And the person will come. And the person will be ministered to by the Holy Spirit. It's not your work to save anyone. It's not your work to change anyone. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. But your word is that you should tell them the word of reconciliation. Tell them God is not angry with you. And as they come, they will meet with God in Jesus' name. I believe somebody will do that work. We can do that this morning also by sharing the link of this service on your social media platform, on the Facebook. Just share it. Make it public. Let everybody watch it. And through the word, I believe that light we gain entrance into somebody's heart. I believe we will do that. Can I trust you with that assignment? You will not fear God in Jesus' name. This morning, by the grace of God, we'll continue our series. Okay, I have less than 25 minutes left. God will help me this morning. God will help me this morning. We continue our series we started last week, which is titled Divine Gateway to Enduring Riches. And today we'll be doing the part two, which talks about how to acquire enduring riches. And the first thing I want you to note is the fact that as a believer in Christ, you have a right to salvation. Do you believe that? Because the Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, in other words, you are accommodated, whosoever believe in him, should not perish, but should have everlasting life. Also, every, be every human being on the face of the earth, we have right to salvation. Also, we believe we have a right to healing. Do you agree with me? Why? Because the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, it says, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace have been laid upon him, and by his stripes, we are healed. That's Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. So that gives us right to salvation as believers because the Bible says Jesus Christ has made a payment that is due for our healing. And when you look at it from the book of when Peter was giving his own account, he said, for by his stripes we were healed. Why? Because Jesus Christ had gone to the cross and had paid the full payment and he collected receipts so that the devil will not tell him that he didn't pay. And now Peter could boldly declare that we were healed. So it's just for us to appropriate the healing that Christ has given us at Calvary. Can I submit to us in the spirit of our teaching this morning also that as a believer, you have a right to riches. 
you have a right to riches. Why? It's part of the salvation package. It's part of the salvation package. Jesus Christ came to the scene. You look at it from the book of Genesis down to Matthew. Every patriarch that walked with God, they lived in riches, in abundance. It's the amazing for me that an angel, unknown visitor, Sister Judith, visited Abraham and he killed a cow. How many of us can kill a chicken for a known visitor? But for a known visitor, that is the level of riches and affluence that God committed to his care. So Abraham was rich. Isaac was the son that followed after him. The Bible said Isaac began to prosper, continued to prosper until he became very prosperous. That is Isaiah chapter 26, if you read from verse 3 downward. What of Jacob? The Bible said concerning Jacob, he was exceedingly rich. After he had done, he was in employment in the house of Laban for over 20-something years. By the time he came out, the Bible recorded that he was exceedingly rich. So as believer in Christ Jesus, we look at it down the line, David also, Solomon, they were all rich. But at the point where he got to Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ was not rich in terms of the physical things we could see. If you doubt that, you will see that he was born in a manger. They would have been able to call Texas children and say, we are coming with a baby, and today is the delivery day. But no, they couldn't do that. It was a place that was borrowed in the manger, where the cattle were feeding, that they gave back to Jesus Christ. And the day was also meant to be dedicated by the law of Moses. It was actually meant to be uh, coming with a lamb. But they didn't have a lamb. They only produced a turtle dove, which, which was uh, two turtle doves, which were the options. Uh, Jesus Christ was not rich in terms of tangible things, but the beauty of it is because he was on divine assignment, everything he needed per time was made available to him. But he could not say that, okay, this is like Abraham. He has this land, he has this. He didn't have that. And the Bible didn't leave us in the dark as regard why Jesus Christ was not rich. And Paul was writing to the church in Corinthian, a uh, Corinth, sorry. And he quoted in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. If you can put it up, please, I will appreciate. He said, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, in other words, this is the maker of all things. He had all things. He, 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 he was living in splendor in heaven. He said, yet for your sake, this, for your sake there is talking about for every believer that he came to die for. He didn't just come to save us from sickness. He didn't just come to save us from sin. He also came to save us from poverty, from lack, from not enough. He said, even though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor so that through his poverty, you might become rich. So that through his poverty, you might become rich. So this scripture is the one that gave us the right to riches as believers in Christ Jesus. That for our sake, he had become poor. So that through his poverty, we can access his riches. So he breaks the heart of God continually if we still see believers live in poverty. It's as good as me saying, my dear, have you eaten? He said, no, and I will. I've gone to a restaurant and buy a very good meal and I presented it to her and she left the food there and she's still complaining I'm hungry. That's exactly what God has done. He has purchased all that we need for healing, for wholeness, for riches. He has purchased all that we need to live a victorious life and not be subservient to the devil any longer. Yet we say we like to manage our poverty. Enduring riches are part of what God has packaged for us in salvation. And enduring riches from the scripture, we can see they are companion, for companions of divine wisdom and obedience to his commandments. Companion of divine wisdom. In other words, everywhere you see people operate in divine wisdom, look not too far away, enduring riches will be closed. That's captured in the book of Proverbs chapter 8, if you read from verse 18. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 18. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 18. He said, Riches and honor are with me, 
enduring riches and righteousness. Me there is talking about wisdom, if you read from the beginning. Riches that no are with me, enduring riches and righteousness. They are actually part of the companion that walk with wisdom. So, if you want to operate in enduring riches, you want to operate in total freedom, you must be careful to walk in divine wisdom. God's desire is for all his children to have riches that is not just for them, but that will flow from them to the next generation. And we have said that in our uh, first installment, talking about God blessing Abraham. Abraham passed the blessing to Isaac. Isaac passed the blessing down to Jacob, and Jacob gave the blessing to the 12 tribes. At the point where he was living, the blessing was not the money left them. Because Jacob was actually in Egypt that time, was about to die. He said, call the sons of Jacob unto me. And they called him, them, and he laid his hand on them, and he transferred the grace that make all that he had. He transferred that same grace to them. And to today, you cannot wish the Israelites away in any way. Talk of military, my. Talk of, there's a book I'm reading. It's titled The Jewish Phenomenon. And he has the record clearly stated there that the highest number of billionaires in the world is from the Jewish race. Can I tell you the truth? They are 0.004% of the entire world. Yet they have the highest number of billionaires in the world. Talk of any field of endeavor, IT, military, they are there. Talk of uh, science, they are there. The great philosophers that we see, sorry, the um, inventors about Einstein and all the other like. They are all from the Jewish race. And that is because the blessing was communicated to them. And they are still working in fulfilling the covenant that is needed. You know, there's, there are two ways to hear. There is a principle of Jesus and the person of Jesus. They have not agreed with the person of Jesus, but they walk the principle of Jesus because that's tied to the covenant. And they are still enjoying the benefits of the covenant. But I want to submit to us this morning, believers in Christ Jesus, that money is only a tool. Money is only a tool. And it will take you wherever you wish. But you must never allow money to take your place as a driver. See money as a car. You have the car, very clean car. Maybe it's Cadillac and uh, customized. And you sit in it and it's not the self-driven car. And he said the car should take you. Of course, it will take you somewhere. Guess where? It's in the ditch. In the ditch. But when you are seated there, when you see danger, you can avoid it. When you notice that mm, where this money is taking me is wrong, you can turn the steering away from such a danger. So money is a tool, and it must never replace you as a driver. In fact, somebody put it this way. He said money is a bad master, but a very good servant. In other words, if you are the one in charge, you can lead the money to do good works and be a blessing to people. And also Jesus Christ made it clear to us that money itself is actually a spirit and is demanding worship from us. And that's why when he needed to compare something you worship with God, he said mammon. And mammon is talking about money. So don't allow the spirit of mammon. And there's no better generation that can understand what that means than this generation we live in. This generation we live in, we see people worshiping money. It was Brother David that was talking with me, I think, two Sundays ago. And he was telling me about a young man who was um, working in, um, I think, um, one of these uh, fast food. McDonald's, yes, I think it was McDonald's. Was the guy flipping burger there just six months after the guy had become a multi-millionaire. Why? He released an album. So one of the um, talk show, they invited him and... Of course, you can imagine we dress, go there, all this thing dangling all around. And he seated there, he was seated there, and they asked him, So tell us, how did you become famous overnight? Within six months, nobody knew you. And tell us your story. So I was selling burger, and somebody came in one day and said to me that I wanted to buy burger. And I looked at the man, well dressed, looking sharp, driving, bad car. And I said to the guy, I love the way he's dressed. He said, oh, you like it? You want to dress like this? He said, yes. So 
I want what you want. Say, are you sure you really want? And he gave the guy a number, and the guy invited him, and that was how he was initiated to a court. He said this on the live television. He said, Satan gave me the money. I'm telling you the truth. And he released the album, and people bought it, and everybody caught fire. But what happened at the end of the day? I think he died. He had an accident or something. Why? Because it's all about worship. Satan will tell you, I can give you anything you want. But just give me your soul in exchange. Give me your soul in exchange. And you don't, I grew up in Africa, Nigeria to be specific. And uh, we grew up in a place where we try to be industrious as little as we can. So when it's almost Christmas time, we buy we build cage by ourselves and we buy little, little chicken and we put them inside and we begin to feed the chicken. And while I was meditating on this, Holy Spirit brought this to me for a clearer explanation that every time you see the man that owns the chicken in the cage, he wakes up every morning, he's putting light there when the weather is too cold, he's throwing uh, corn, he's throwing everything there for them to feed. Uh, we think that this man really loves this chicken. But when it's Christmas time, this same man will bring out the chicken that he had been taking care, pampering, and we slaughter the chicken. And God said to me, that's exactly what the devil does. He keeps the people in the cage, and he keeps feeding them with everything they think they need. But he knows that he has their soul under his control. This same man, as he's going to feed his chicken, we see other chicken, we kick them away. Why? Because I'm not in control over your soul, so I won't feed you. And that's what the devil is doing. And believers are falling for it today. We are falling for it. We don't know the fact that it's the soul that the enemy is encaging. And he can feed them with so many things and have all the goodies of this world, but because he's in control of their soul. I've had a, one of these hip-hop, what's it called, Mus musician also said in one of his rap that he sold his soul to the devil. And we thought it was a song. No, it was truly what happened. He sold his soul to the devil. And the guy was famous. I'm sure we all know Tupac. <laughs> he was famous all over the world. But what happened? At the end of the day, they all shot him. The devil cut him short at the prime of his age. And that's what he does. That's what he does. Every time the devil gives, it's because he knows that he can put you in cage and access you to be able to cut off at any time. But I trust God that none of us here will be cut off in the name of Jesus Christ. So I encourage you, please, be careful how you gravitate towards looking for money. The love of money is the root of all evil. You know, I've established the fact that there's nothing wrong in having money. It's a tool. But don't allow it to become your driver. Don't let the money be the reason why you won't come to church. That means he's in charge at that time. Where you can say that, okay, I can't join this prayer because I need to go make extra cash. No, that means you are not in charge any longer. And I trust God that you will not lose charge in Jesus' name. So our topic today really is how to acquire enduring riches. How to acquire enduring riches. Number one, get connected to God. God is the custodian of true riches. And the source of every good and perfect gift. James 1.17, we all know, is the source of every good and perfect gift. Does that mean Satan can't give riches? He can give. And that's why I painted the picture to you. But remember, every time you are collecting from the devil, the guy is no fool. He has such a person in the cage. So he knows that he has total control over such a life. And he can assess and cut it short at any time. But for God, he's the one who gives good and he gives perfect gift. And also in the book of First Corinthians, sorry, First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 12. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 12, the Bible says, Both riches and honor come from God, and God reigns over all. In his hand is power and might. In his hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Somebody might want to ask me if the Bible is saying both riches and honor come from God and he has power over all. Then why is the devil in charge? It's because we have given him charge over us. Whoever you obey, you are a slave to such a person. 
So every time you begin to obey the devil as he's prompting your heart to go the negative, you are giving your leadership role to him. And at that point, all of God's blessings that he has given to you, the devil can steal it. And it's the blessing that is steal from other people. You know John 10.10, 10, he's a thief. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. When he steals people's blessing, that he cannot go use it to feed the people that he wants to kill. But I trust God that he will not steal your blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So you must get connected to God. He is the endless source. I like to call him the inexhaustible source. If you doubt the abundance of God, please go to the sea. Just take a tour to Galveston and look at the body of water. How much of it can you take and it will dry up? That is how rich your God is. That is how rich your God is. It's inexhaustible. But until your soul is rich in God, your life cannot accommodate its true riches. Why? If your soul is not rich in God, then the true riches will be too heavy for your life and to crumble. And I pray that your life will not crumble in the name of Jesus Christ. The desire of God is that you give your soul to him. And that's why it's not your tithe, it's not your offering. As much as that is important, what God is really asking for is, my son, give me your heart. Give me your heart. Because when God is in your, having, having control over your heart, then everything you will do in your life will be ordered by him and you can access his true riches. Without a genuine relationship with the owner of wealth and riches, you cannot gain access to his possession. We all know Matthew 6.33. Matthew 6.33 simply says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All other things shall be added to you. So that is one thing that I need us to know. Deuteronomy 8, 18 also, he said he's the one who gives us power to make wealth. Not for our self-aggrandizement, but to establish, to confirm the covenant that he has made with us. And I trust God that the power you need, even to command the resources that is allotted you, is released upon you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. So the first point you want to acquire riches, enduring riches, it must be connected to God. If you have riches outside of God, I tell you the truth, such cannot endure, it cannot last. It takes you being plugged to the endless source for you to have the riches of God flow through you. Number two, operate in divine wisdom. You must operate in divine wisdom. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 8 that we read earlier, verse 18, it says, Riches and honor are with me. Divine wisdom is the one talking there. It says, Riches and honor are with me. Enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yes, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. I traverse the way of righteousness. In other words, if you are looking for me, wisdom, you can't find me just anywhere. It's in the path where righteousness tread that I always follow. In the midst of the path of justice, that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth, that I may fill their treasuries. Your treasuries shall be filled in the name of Jesus Christ. So, you must operate in divine wisdom, not diabolic wisdom, not human wisdom, because human wisdom will only give you ordinary results. But it takes divine wisdom to have extraordinary results. The wisdom of God will give you access to divine secrets. How do I know? Jacob. Jacob. He didn't know what to do. The man cheated him several times. But he had the Spirit of God giving him the wisdom of God, giving him divine secrets that, you know what, every time they are meeting, just put this before them, and whatever they behold, they will become. And we see what became of it. He actually carried along all the resources, all the riches that belong to Laban. What was Solomon? Solomon, because of our time this morning, 1 Kings 10, you can write it down, 1 Kings 10, 23 to 25, the Bible said people came all over the world to seek the wisdom of Solomon. And as they were coming, they were coming with their treasures. They were coming with their treasures. So King Solomon surpassed all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. 
Now all the heart sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. Verse 25, each man brought his presence. Can you see? They were coming to seek his wisdom. In other words, this guy, Solomon, had become a solution provider. And as people are coming to seek solution from him, they were coming with their presence, articles of silver and gold, garments, armor, spices, horses, and meal at a set rate year by year, year by year. So it was divine wisdom that gave Solomon access to these uncommon riches that we are talking about today. What of Job? Job traded with divine wisdom and he was exceedingly wealthy. I trust God that we have time to do a study on the book of Job. Job was the first man that was truly diversified in his investment portfolio. You will see that he was into clothing business, he was into real estate, he was into farming, he was in, I will show you, transportation, he was into all of this. And he came by all this through divine wisdom, through divine wisdom. I trust God that we will operate as from today in divine wisdom so that the riches that we endure will be found in our household in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, because of our time this morning, be diligent in your assignment. Be diligent in your assignment. Number one, get connected to God. That is one way to acquire enduring riches. Number two, operate in divine wisdom, not foolishness. Don't seek, <laughs> don't seek information from Google. No, let God be your guide. Let God be your guide. Every time you seek information from Google, remember you are hitting from the tree of good and evil. <laughs> but when you seek information from God, you do like Adam. Adam, you are obeying God expressly as he's giving you instruction. So number three this morning, be diligent in your assignment. Diligent is the mother of good fortune, but laziness is a neighbor to poverty. So if you live in the house of laziness, you are just a neighbor to poverty. We soon knock on your door. But diligence is the mother of good fortune. Look at what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 10 verse 4. He who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. The hand of the diligent makes rich. What does it mean to be diligent? Diligent is doing it and doing it well. Doing it and doing it well. What is discipline? Discipline is doing it well always. Staying through, staying through. But diligence is you doing it well. Doing it well. Can it be that in your particular department, if they are looking for who will write the report in a perfect manner, is you they will call. That's diligence. It's a matter of time. Riches will come to you. Because for a hand that is diligent, kings will seek your, your service. Kings will seek your service. Have you ever thought about it in the book of Genesis? When they got to the land of Egypt, the children of Israel came to Egypt. After Joseph had called them to come, go bring your... Pharaoh said to them, look for those who are diligent and let them serve before me. They've not written the book of Proverbs that time, but that was exactly what happened. You know why? Kings have zero tolerance for laziness. Because you can't become a king in your field if you are lazy. So they know what it takes to bring them to where they are. They can't allow anyone that doesn't have what they have to be around them. It's called diligence. It's called diligence. He said to them, you should look for the best of them to come and serve before him. And I believe God that somebody is taking up this assignment this morning that you not just be believers that talk but you become deliver believers that walk diligent and is better than cheap talk you can wake up and declare i'm a man of dominion from now to next year if you are not putting your hand to work diligently i'm telling you the truth somebody will yes still dominate you but when you begin to operate with diligence on your mountain that god has positioned you I tell you the truth. It's a matter of time. The kings will beckon to you. 
the kings will beckon to you. Have you noticed also in the book of Isaiah chapter 60, that scripture we often quote, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Darkness may cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but for you, lights will rise for you. He said, Gentiles will come to your light, but the kings will come to the rising of your brightness. In other words, you are outstanding. It's the rising of your brightness that will attract the king. The light that you are shining will attract Gentiles. But when you want to attract king, then the brightness must be rising. So I encourage your heart this morning, believers in Christ Jesus, let's be diligent in what God are put into our hand. Imagine that office where you operate. That's the way I prepare my message by the grace of God. I say to myself, if Jesus Christ will stand on this pulpit to declare this word to the people, will he just wake up on Sunday morning and quickly look for a note? No. It will take time to pray. That was his pattern. So I will pray. I will fast. I will say, God, how do I say this? At times, even till the time I'm here, I'm still correcting some things. That is diligence. That is diligence. You know what? This is the mountain God has positioned me. But every one of us have our, man, our, our own mountain. So on your own mountain, walk at it. Walk at it. So that if they need somebody around that will deliver, it's you that will first cross everybody's mind. Never stand begging for what you can earn. Never stand begging for that which you have the power to earn. Because there's truly dignity in labor. Never stand begging for what you have the power to earn. So it is better earn than you begging for it. Believers in Christ, please, don't let's, don't, don't, don't let's bastardize the grace of God. And just say, I've given my tithe and I know that God will turn it around. God is not casino. God is not casino. Every time you see the children of Israel sacrifice and God is saying, we'll bless them. No, it's the work they are doing that he blesses. Have you read in the book of Isaiah, sorry, Genesis chapter 26? Isaac dug well. When he said he prospered, you think God just spoke heaven and money just started coming down. No, he dug well. They blocked it. He dug again. He didn't live with excuses. Some of us, when we face little challenge, we excuse ourselves out of the business and we just keep complaining and complaining. We complain about weather. If it's not weather today, it's the government tomorrow. If it's not government, it's inflation. We complain. But can I tell you the truth? This is common to everybody. It is you rising above it that will make you stand out. So please, never stand begging for that which you have the power to earn because there is dignity in labor. There's dignity in labor. Number four, be a covenant practitioner. We preach this often and we always say it. It was Pastor Kola that told me this. He said that as a pastor, you are actually called CRO. I said, what does that mean? Chief Repeating Officer. <laughs> in other words, you have said it before you say it again. You say it again. Chief Repeating Officer. Be a covenant practitioner. I plead with you by the mercies of God. You cannot walk in covenant. You can't demand Abraham's blessing where you have not done Abraham's work. Nobody preached to Abraham to give tithe. Do you know why Abraham gave tithe? He met a man called Melchizedek, the king of Salem. And the Bible said Melchizedek noticed that he has labored and he fed him. When he fed him, he brought out of his treasury, he gave him tithe of all. If you have been fed in the house of God, then your tithe should not be demanded. It should be given. It's an obligation. God commanded it. Your offering, you have a choice. You can say it's 1%, you can say it's 2%, but for your tithe, it's 10% of what God has committed to your hand. And please don't rob yourself. Don't be part of the people that pay tithe in January, they skip in February, they pay in March, they skip. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. You know why? Because earthly things can teach us this. You don't pay your tax this year and you skip it next year and you think they will not knock at your door. And your tax is a commitment to the government to say all that you promise you will do, you must do it. Is that not so? That is it. It's the task they used to do road. It's the task they used to fix all the public goods that we enjoy. The same thing, your tithe is to commit to God to say, you know what, all that you have promised to do, do it in my life. 
That's why I say we open heaven. Why will he open heaven? To, de- to release the blessing that he has promised. So please, I encourage your heart. Pay your tithe. Give your first fruit. First fruit, I started it in 2013. 2013, I started giving my first fruit. And I said to you, under God who sees my heart, that that was the first year I finished the year without borrowing a dime. Normally, I work in a bank. We have access to loan everywhere. So I always have something hanging at the end of the year. But that year that I paid my first fruit was the first year I finished and I didn't have any loan that I'm owing. I don't know how it happened, but I just know the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 9 and 10, it says, you should honor the Lord with, your, with, with the first fruits of your increase, so that your bowel will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. So it's a seed of honor. Please, let's do it. Give offering as God is laying on your heart. I like to give when the Spirit of God is leading me because Spirit-led generosity is the one that brings results, not the one that they coerce you to give, and not the one you give because of the mindset of when I give God, they will give me back. Let it be an act of honor, and now watch what God will do in your life. Please give sacrificial seed as much as is needed. I'm telling you the truth. We have had the privilege of closing our accounts several times. Let me share this testimony with you. Time has gone. Oh, my God. It's dangerous. <laughs> wow. Last year, God laid on our heart to sow a seed. The seed was about, um, about $5,000. My wife and I agreed that we would do this. Uh, at that point... It was not that money was plenty everywhere, but we have learned to believe God. So we did, we believe God. After we sown our seeds, just um, some weeks after, some weeks after, we were driving, we were coming from downtown, and the engine of my car knocked. And we had only one car. The car knocked right there. I was on the toll road. I didn't know what to do. But thank God, I was close to the slope, so I slowed down. As I was getting down, of course, when we landed at the um, front way, the car couldn't move. Some people willingly just parked and said, can we help you? I said, oh, pleasure. So they joined me, we pushed the car. I called the mechanic, he said, okay, he can't come, but we sent the tow vehicle. So they sent the tow vehicle, we towed the vehicle, and he said to me, it's knocked. <sighs> at that point, I didn't know what to do, but while we were still thinking of what will happen, okay, how do we even go from here? Yes, I called somebody, and the person said, oh, don't worry, I have... Um, my son's car that I can spare you to use. So he gave me his, his, um, one of their cars in their house. And that was what took us out of the mechanic. So for like two weeks, we were using the car. And I went somewhere to pray. They were doing, somebody was doing 50th birthday and he called me to come. And my own style, I don't go there. So I was waiting in the car. It was in the car where I was waiting. Somebody saw me. I said, ah, you bought a new car. I said, ah, no, this one is Borupo, so it's not my car. And so I laughed. He said, ah, what happened to your car? And I said to the person, and he said, I can take you to a dealer. They will give you and you'll be paying. I said, since I came to America, I've never bought a car on loan. I said, I'm believing God for another car. The person lied. He said, hey, Pastor K, this is America. This is not Nigeria. I said to him, I believe God for a car. I lie not under God. That was a Saturday around 6 p.m. that he was talking to me in the garage where I was waiting for the celebrant to come. And I pray and I leave. By the next day in the morning, the headquarters, I'm talking of something that happened last year, May. I was in the church. I got a text from a church member who said to me, please, after first service, I'll love to see you, sir. And um, after first service, he called me and he started apologizing. I said, what happened? He said, God, I've been laying on my heart to give you a car. And I've been delaying. And I don't know. I can't just sleep. Please. And he took me to his car. He showed me the car. I wanted to faint, but God resuscitated me. And eventually he said to me, he said, but this is a small car. You are a big family. Um, my wife and I were now are thinking, you know what? Let's just give you a Jeep. And that was how he took me to dealership on a Monday. We got there. And right there, my friend paid over $23,000. And I, they gave me the key of the car, everything paid for, the plate number, they sent it to my house, and that was how I got the car. I'm saying to you, spirit-led generosity. Don't, be, don't put glue in your hand. When you put glue in your hand, and everything in your hand must not fall. 
must not go. The truth is you can't have more than what you are holding. But the Bible said, cast your bread upon the waters. After many days, it will come back. God is not looking for avenue to take away from you. He's always looking for avenue to give to you. Why? He's a giving God. He's been giving since the beginning. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. He didn't stop there, looked at it and said, these people are powerless. He gave the best of heaven, the Holy Spirit. So God is always looking for avenue to give to us. And I trust God that as we operate in this same dimension, the generosity that God is will begin to manifest in our lives. In Jesus' name. Of course, please give to your biological and spiritual parents. I don't like preaching about this so that people don't think I'm pointing at myself. But it's a good thing to do. There are scriptures that validate this, but because of time, I won't be able to go there. Ephesians chapter 6, 2 to 3, Matthew 10, 40 to 42. Validate the fact that you should give to your biological parents and whoever it is you call spiritual parents, give to them. Let something leave from you to them. It is you also drawing down from the grace they carry, the grace they carry. Then lastly, give to the poor. That's also very, very important. It's very, very important. God is extremely passionate about the poor. The Bible said God has made the rich and the poor, but he didn't make them so. It's the decision of the people that make them fall in the category of the poor. But yet, in his manifold mercies, he still always wants to reach out to them. And he will always want to reach out to them through the people who have understood the principle. And that's why he's trusting you. He's trusting me that we will be generous to the poor. And look at it in the book of Psalm 41. There's, there's a tremendous blessing connected to you giving to the poor. God said, I will be your personal physician. When you are giving to the poor, I will be your personal physician. When you are giving to the poor, I will be your security. So all these blessings, several blessings, Proverbs 28, 27, you can write it down also. Proverbs 19, 17, all these blessings actually come to those who give to the poor. And lastly, to secure enduring riches, be financially literate. Be financially literate. Go for learning. Learn. 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 Learn how to turn $1 to $2 without stealing. Learn. Learn. It's good. It's good. That is actually the food of the soul. Knowledge. Feed your soul with knowledge. Feed your soul with knowledge. I had a definition of um, wisdom in one of our meetings this week, in the pastor's meeting. Somebody said wisdom feeds from knowledge. In other words, once your knowledge base is empty, your wisdom will be shallow. So you must continue to broaden your knowledge base in your field where you operate. Listen to those who have gone ahead of you and learn from them. Learn from their mistakes. It's costlier to learn from your own mistake. Learn from other people's mistakes so that you don't have to repeat the error of the past. It was Zig Ziglar that said this. It's quite funny. He said, rich people have a big library and a small television. But poor people have a big television and a small library. Why? Because poor people are always watching others perform on the stage of life. Whereas God is saying to you, the world is waiting for your manifestation. God wants you to perform in your own sphere of influence. God wants you to perform. Unbelievers are taking advantage of developing their minds and they are doing exploits. Exploits. They are doing exploits. I want you to know God wants you to be financially literate. Jesus Christ, as a perfect example, he operates in financial literacy. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't look at it and say, ah, we've turned, you can feed them, you can turn bread to them, you can turn little to many, just scatter it. No, he said, pack it, keep it. That's savings. Savings. He didn't have to waste the resources God had given him. So engage in the culture of savings and investment. It's needful. Engage in the culture of savings and investment. Your saving won't give you enduring riches. Don't let me lie to you. But what saving does for you is that it shows to God that you have power over money. That you can take this money. This one, I won't spend you. I'll keep you here. And you will still keep it there. And the money won't push you to spend it. Because money is a spirit, so it push people. <laughs> it push people. But when you can subdue that spirit and put it away, then God will say, this one I can trust you with more. Having an investment plan is also important. 
investment plan. Somebody said the real estate is actually, the only estate that is real is the real estate. Invest in landed properties is an opportunity to perpetuate the wealth that God has given you. Invest in landed property, invest in anything that will make your money grow that is legitimate. Always consider your giving to God's kingdom as an investment, not a donation. Please, always consider your giving to God's kingdom as an investment. If you see it that way, then as you are buy one share there, you ensure you buy one here too. But most of us see it as, I just help me this particular so that they have more shares in the church. No, it's an investment. And if you see it like that, then your giving will come with a different attitude. Look at what the Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 18, verse 29 to 30. We are rounding off right now. I'm reading from the contemporary English version. It says, Jesus answered, you can be sure that anyone who gives up home or wife or brothers, or family, you give up relationship, you give up your resources. He said, because of God's kingdom, we'll be giving much more in this life. That's why I say it's an investment. The dividends will not wait for you only in heaven. It will start from here. He said, we'll be giving much more in this life, and in the future world, they will have eternal life. So this morning, I want you to bow your heart as you begin to appreciate God. Magnify the name of the Lord for sending us his word. I believe God that is simple enough for us to understand. I want you to ask for the grace to walk in the light of the word. That you not be a wasteful manager of God's resources in the name of Jesus. And you know where we started from? You are here this morning. You are watching us online. You are not connected to God. Then these riches we are talking about cannot be your portion. I'm not saying you can't have money. Of course, you can have money. But enduring riches, you have to be connected to God. So that's why this morning I give you the privilege to come to God, to say to him, Father, I yield my life to you this morning. I yield my life to you this morning. Forgive me of my sins. Wipe away my past with your precious blood. Give me a new beginning, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Write my name in the Lamb Book of Life, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for saving my soul. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I will bless this morning. Please, I invite you to join us in our Bible study on Wednesday. It's at 6.30 p.m. Please be there. It's an opportunity to know what is freely given to us in Christ Jesus. Because when you know what is written, you become a commander in the arena of life. So please, I encourage you to be part of it. And on Friday, we will all be at the headquarters for the Dominion Leadership Summit. And it's starting on Friday at 6.30 p.m. Then Monday, on Saturday, sorry, will be 10 a.m. And on Sunday, it will be morning session and evening session. Okay, 6 p.m., sorry. I'm using TIC Cypress time. 6 p.m. on Friday is the Dominion Leadership Summit. And also, by God's grace, We'll be having Saturday 10 a.m. And on Sunday, we have morning service there. We'll be meeting in our own church here. Then we'll be joining the headquarters at the evening by 6 p.m. for the grand finale. Amen. Somebody blessed this morning. Please, let's put our hands together for the Lord. Is it time for us to practice the message you have just heard? Please give your offering. Pay your tithes. You don't give tithe, you pay it because you owe it. And you have any outstanding pledge, it's a good time for us to redeem it. Let's be outstanding. Let's lift up our giving this morning. Let's appreciate God for the gift that you have put in our hand. Father, we thank you. We count it a real privilege that we are recipients of your seed. You are the one that gives seed to the sower. We lift up our seed this morning. And we thank you that your blessing is released upon it. Every hand that is lifted will never know lack in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Lord, because we continue to live in your abundance. In the mighty name of Jesus. The enduring riches that God gives will be manifested in our lives on a daily basis. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah.
If you are worshiping with us for the very first time, can you please put up your hand? We want to acknowledge you specially this morning. If today is your very first time of worshiping with us in DIC Cypress Church, okay, please let's keep inviting people as Minister Charles told us. It is very, very, very important. God bless you. Let's share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Unto God, the most gracious one, I commit you this morning. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord prosper your journey all through this week. In the name of Jesus, everywhere you go this week, you shall be celebrated. The grace of God is resting upon you to bring you victory in every way. In the mighty name of Jesus, nothing will take you down this week. You will always rise and be above. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you will not lack the companionship of the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus. This week is blessed for your sake. Your home is blessed. Your work is blessed. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'm a person of dominion. I'm a person of dominion. I live in dominion. Dominion over sin, sicknesses, diseases, oppression, poverty, and all the wickedness of the devil. I'm an outstanding success. I'm a peace setter. I'm a role model. I'm righteous. I'm rich. And I'm relevant. I'm born to win. And I'm born to reign. As you have declared with your mouth this morning, so shall it be to you. You will always win in the name of Jesus. And you will always reign. You will never know shame all the days of your life. The position of honor that God has put you, no one will drag you down. In Jesus' mighty name. Go forth and prosper. Go forth and manifest the glory of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.